Je voulais savoir comment les astronautes dormaient dans les navettes et s'ils rêvaient tout à fait normalement ou si ça influait sur les rêves. So we talk about sleeping in space and dreaming. Could you, uh, could you maybe elaborate, Sergei? Have you dreamt in space? Uh, I don't see dreams very often, even here on, on the ground. And what I've found, exactly what I learned even before flights, that our dreams is, is our experience. <clears throat> so I remember when I saw first dreams in, in flight, it was dreams about life on Earth, talking with my friends, doing something on the ground, but uh, closer to the end of the mission and in subsequent missions, and sometimes on the ground after that, I recall memory of uh, space flight and uh, some, uh, some activity on, on board the station. And you, Michael, can you uh, share with us? I would, I would say almost exactly the same, that um, I, I dreamt, I remember my dreams about the same amount, which isn't that often as I do on Earth, and uh, I noticed that when I came back, I dreamt a lot about being in space, and that has diminished since the time has passed. One thing I wanted to comment on, though, it's, it's hard to sleep in space. Um, you know, we all love that sensation of lying down on a bed and putting your head on a pillow, and you just don't have that. And in fact, the, the space shuttle sleeping bags have a, a special Velcro strap, but you could actually Velcro your head to a pillow, so you have that sensation of having resting your head on something. And in the absence of that, <clears throat> what I found was that it was pretty easy for me to fall asleep, because at the end of the day, you're pretty tired generally. But sometimes I would often wake up uh, in the middle of the night or, you know, three or four hours into the sleep, and then I had a hard time falling back asleep, uh, particularly if there's some sleep shifting involved, which happens quite often uh, on a long duration mission. Jean-François, share your dreams with us. <laughs> no, on my first flight, I was in a, in a sleeping uh, box. It's like a sarcophage, it's like a small box. But when you close your eyes and you float in weightlessness inside the box, you can easily imagine that you are in, in a huge bedroom. And uh, as I dreamt a few times in space that I was floating in space, not in a space vehicle, but just in vacuum, just floating, no need to breathe or to eat. It was very nice. Uh, and to help uh, prevent the back pain, NASA was proposing to us, and I guess it's still the case, a special harness which help keep the knees close to the chest to force a fertile configuration. Because if you sleep uh, without any restraint system, the back tends to curve, and some astronauts were complaining, uh, I mean, severely about severe back pain. So it's the first time I slept slightly like, like a baby, like, you know, like uh, in a fertile position, and I slept quite well. On my second space flight, I used sometimes some sleeping pills uh, to help fall asleep. I had told myself, if I don't feel asleep two hours into the time where I should be in bed sleeping, I would take uh, a sleeping pill. And once, it gave me very strong hallucination, and I, I um, scared Ed Lou, who went to wake up Jerry Dillinger, the, the medical doctor who was just back from here. And uh, Jerry told uh, Ed, check that Billy Bob is breathing. If he's breathing okay, then that's fine. And Ed was ev even more frightened by this suggestion, so he went to wake up Charlie Precourt in the cockpit, and he said, you know, if we need to do an emergency uh, deorbit prep now, uh, don't count on Billy Bob. He's, you know, in... I was seeing animals and people, but the next morning I woke up, I was fine. So you, you, you preparing, I mean, you were signed for Expedition 20, if I remember correctly, so you haven't flown yet. What, what is the dream about flying? Well, uh, I'd like to sleep in the Japanese experiment module, uh, as well as working there, if possible. So you've chosen your room already? Yeah. You've reserved yeah. reservations in advance? Yes. And it's a long duration flight that you're preparing. Are you, are you being prepared differently for the long duration flight than, there's, than your colleagues' short duration flights? Yes. Uh, the, a little bit different, but uh, essentially the same. But the uh, emphasis is on more on the uh, te technical or uh, skill based, not the task based ones. Leo, did you sleep in your home base in Columbus module? Uh, 
Uh, actually, I didn't. Uh, I had a, um, uh, my my cabin was in the Russian um, service module, what they call the Kayuta, and uh, I spent uh, most of my flight there. And then when uh, my um, uh, when the, the next um, um, U.S. astronaut arrived on board, uh, Garrett Reisman gave him the cabin and went to the Russian docking compartment, which was which was much more noisy. Um, I'm sorry to be a little bit disappointing, but uh, I, I, did, I don't remember my dreams usually, and I didn't uh, in space either. Um, but I, I noticed something for sleeping. Um, I used to sleep on my, on my stomach on the, on, the, uh, on the Earth. And uh, so when I'm trying to do that in space, it never works. So I, w I could rotate a lot of times and <laughs> without sleeping. But uh, I agree with Michael also that the sleep shifts uh, were uh, kind of disturbing. We had a big sleep shift during the flight, 10 hours, and then several small ones. And that's probably the main reason why I didn't sleep very well. Yeah, maybe you had the Velcro on your front head. <laughs> that's why. Yeah, we can find something, yeah. We have some bungees uh, which, which work, uh, make, make, makes it a little bit easier. But uh, yeah, the, I didn't find the, the real right technique for sleeping well. Uh, just a detail about the sleeping bag. The sleeping bag is not like the regular sleeping bag you buy when you go camping because astronauts have found themselves outside the sleeping bag in the early flights. The sleeping bag we have has a, a, a zip that goes up to the neck. There are two openings for the, the two arms, so you cannot escape the sleeping bag while you're sleeping. And at the four corners, you have a special atta attachment device and you, you can put the sleeping bag where you want. On my second space flight, and, and third, I liked very much to fly on the ceiling of the mid-deck of the space shuttle facing down. And once Eileen Collins was just next to me, but facing the ceiling just 20 centimeters away from her eyes, I would have not been able to sleep with knowing there is a structure just next to me. But you know, astronauts are, are sleeping in any attitude, and that's quite fun to, to, to see the picture of the setup of sleeping bags of the whole crew that are upside down on the walls, on the ceiling, but it works well. And if you don't attach yourself, if you're in your sleeping bag and you don't use the uh, special attachment devices, as you call them, uh, I don't know. You, you basically float through the station as you sleep? You probably, Nobody's don't, experimenting? You probably don't float too far. You probably hit something on the way. <laughs> but actually, uh, talking about orientation uh, during flight, I remember uh, some crew members uh, so used to have uh, ceiling and floor on the station uh, on the ground, so they, they try to take position kind of parallel to floor because they said it's inconvenient to, uh, to sleep perpendicular to floor. Uh, but in reality, all, all directions are equal. And I remember on my first flight, uh, what Mike mentioned, that many people like to, uh, to have some kind of support from the back or on the back of your head to, to be really attached to something. But when I was on my first flight, being junior on this mission, when six people were sleeping in, um, in the same module, I got less convenient uh, place as, as a junior. So I, I used to fly basically free floating because I was in sleeping bag and sleeping bag was attached but not tightly attached to the surface. So I get used to um, sleep free floating so later when I was able to attach it to the wall I just slightly attach it to, to have more more degrees of freedom 